today I'm taking you guys on a little visit to what must surely be one of the most unfortunately named places anywhere. The town in question is called, wait for it, Asbestos or Asbest in Russian. The mineral that's infamous for its cancer-causing qualities is what this town is named after. And if you're wondering why I'm the only one on the train, well, I think the answer's obvious, isn't it? It's because nobody else wants to go there. So I've arrived in Asbest, and I thought before we focus on Asbestos, the mineral, we could have a little look around Asbestos, the town. Incidentally, I have a postcard set of the town from the Soviet period, and I thought we can look around and see if we find any of the buildings and see how they look now. So I think I found the first one straight away. One thing you'll notice is that everything looks better before than it does now. The Soviets put an awful lot of effort and consideration into town planning. Oh, that's a site that's dying out, isn't it? Old school floodlights there. A little reminder over my shoulder of when as best hosted the Olympics. That was the Olympic flame just there. Obviously I'm pulling your leg, as best never hosted the Olympics. This building's for sale. I'm not sure they're going to find a buyer. So here's the front cover. In case any of you care, I'll just tell you that the town of Asbest has a population of around 56,000. Now by the end of the USSR its population was 85,000, so that's quite a significant drop-off in the past 30 odd years. So obviously a lot of people have left because apart from the asbestos industry there's not much work here and of course uh, during the USSR I'm sure that the damaging effects of asbestos would have been hidden whereas now everyone knows about it so a lot of people probably have decided they don't want to work in the asbestos industry anymore. In case you guys are wondering, this isn't actually the local prison. It's a Soviet-style department store. The thing I like about coming to such places is that in many ways they're still pretty much like they were 50 years ago. You can walk around and you don't have to suspend your imagination very much at all to think that you're still in the 1960s. Here the town pays tributes to some of the workers from the asbestos mill. A nice photo here, some people celebrating their wedding day. During the Soviet period it was common to go all around the town and have your photos taken by landmarks or memorials and Lenin statues etc. The eternal flame burns in commemoration to the unknown soldiers, all of those that fell during the Second World War. So I just came across this building, apart from the Lenin artwork that's gone it's pretty much the same. Well I was saying that if you look here by my finger They've clearly completely redone the roof. Oh, all this walking around the town is getting me a bit hot. I've got rid of my hat in an effort to cool down, but the problem is now I've just got to avoid any grandma because it's written in the Russian constitution that any babushka has the right 
to reprimand anybody who doesn't wear a hat in the winter. That's still there. Right, not good news. I decided it's time to put my hat back on again before I got the tearing off from her grandma. And um, basically, it seems to have fallen out of my pocket. Um, I have no idea where it is, so I'm going to have to recheck all the steps I've done for the last five minutes to try to find it. So, that should be fun. That looks like the baby just there. Ugh. Actually, maybe that's why the grandmas tell you not to take your hat off. Not because your head will get cold, but because you'll probably lose it. So once upon a time, students in this town would come here and learn how to mine the asbestos. Of course, in 1951, nobody knew about the harmful effects of asbestos. So here's the Pioneer Palace, where children could come and do after-school activities. And over there in the distance, there's a place for adults to go to after work and do cultural activities. This culture palace looks seriously cool. Maybe I got it wrong earlier when I said that I was the only person to come to as best. Maybe lots of people come here. They've even got an information board in English. That's great. It means I can be lazy and not tell you anything and you can just read it all about it yourself. This is funny. It says that the sculptures we're about to see in a minute were done by the famous sculptor Ernest Nierzvestny. But in Russian, Nierzvestny means not famous. Now, surely only the Russian language could have such a surname as not famous. Now, trust me, guys, this is a seriously cool culture palace. So this sensational roof was done by students in 1956 and it's not been touched since. It's not been renovated, it's exactly how it was. The attention to detail is stunning. It's got the emblems of the 15 Soviet republics around the ceiling as well. What a treat. And of course you've got to have your bow lift of your Lenin up there. So they're celebrating New Year still in here. And this hides something very interesting. Let's see if we can get a peek, shall we? Even the doors are cool. Oh, look at that. No messing about there. Again, exactly as it was since the mid-1950s. My goodness, that was immense. Well, I thought it was. I mean, surely you guys did as well, right? That's kind of nice. Still doing some of the adverts in painted form. Sure, they have the modern adverts as well. And in fact, next month, one of the most famous actresses from the Soviet Union is coming here. Whew. So that wraps up the town. So let's just focus a little bit on the mineral. Um, I know talking about minerals and things must be incredibly boring so I wouldn't normally do it but because asbestos is such a bad boy then I think we can discuss it a little bit. Basically it's been banned in the EU for almost 20 years um, but in Russia and in other parts of the world as well it is still quite widely used. Now it's a shame that it's so harmful because actually it's a very useful mineral. It's very good for insulation and fireproofing so I guess there's still a demand for it that's why it's still farmed. Despite the health risks so many people still work here because it's what you call a monotown. 
it's basically that's the only employment really the only meaningful employment of the whole town I guess we might wonder why people still choose to work there but the fact of the matter is you know it puts bread on the table you know if uh, if that closed down for some reason then there'd be an awful amount of unemployment in this town and a lot of the men that work there I guess perhaps um, unskilled manual labourers would find it difficult to find a job elsewhere and also it's uh, important for the country as well in fairness working with asbestos only increases your risk of getting something nasty uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get it in western countries nobody wants to take the risk of, of that and uh, I guess companies why they'll be sued and and you know workers don't want to you know risk their health I remember once when I worked all well, many years ago at, uh, on the metro on the tube in London the station I worked at Brixton I think it's Brixton or Vauxhall one of them I worked at both they were removing asbestos and the whole station had to be completely closed for three weeks during the process. So here's the museum of the town. Kind of old school as you can see but that's fine by me. So this is what it's all about. A big chunk of asbestos. And as you can see, asbestos comes in all sorts of colours, shapes and sizes. You know what, seeing as how I like you guys, I'm going to give you another treat. This is basically what we've all come to see. And it is pretty impressive. Just look at that huge asbestos pit. It's gigantic. Okay folks, that's your offer today. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. <laughs>